Hi, this is Chaplain Greg with your Wandering Wesleyan, and uh, we're going through the Wandering, Walking Through the Word series, and uh, we are in the Chronicles and the King Scrolls, uh, looking at the kings of Israel. And uh, if you are enjoying what you're watching and getting something out of it, I ask that you like and subscribe this video on YouTube and uh, share it with folks and make comments below. Love to hear what you're thinking about this material. So we are picking up with the split of the northern and the southern kingdom. Jeroboam is king of the north. Rehoboam is king of the south. Remember, the northern kingdom called Israel are all the tribes that separated from Judea and Benjamin's a part of Judea. So Judea and Benjamin, the northern kingdom is led by Jeroboam and he has led them all into idolatry. Now, the kings of the north, before we get into the kings of the south, let's talk about them. All of them are evil, all of them. As you're reading through the, the stories in both uh, Kings and Chronicles about the northern kings, it's rife with coups and assassinations. Uh, if you're a fan of Game of Thrones, it's a lot like that. A lot of intrigue, political, uh, dynasties, people killing each other to gain power. It's, it's nasty, nasty stuff. The worst king of all, and there were a lot of bad kings, but the worst was this fellow called Ahab and his wife Jezebel. And 1 Kings chapters 16 through 22 and 2 Chronicles 18 talks about them. During this time, we have two prophets arise, Elijah and Elisha. And they're prophets in the north. Both prophesied against Ahab. Elisha, the second one, also prophesied against other kings, Ahaziah through Joash. And in chapter 18 of 1 Kings, we have the famous showdown of, of Elijah and the prophets of Baal, uh, in which God shows up in a mighty way. So I encourage you to read that. Chapter 18, verses 20 through 41 talks about that. Elijah does many miracles during his life, does seven miracles. And he appoints Elisha as his successor. And that's in 1 Kings 19, verses 19 through 21. And Elisha asks for a double portion of Elijah's mandate as a prophet. So we record seven miracles for Elijah. We record 14 miracles for Elisha. Elisha has a double portion of the filling of the Spirit of God. Elijah is taken away in a whirlwind, in a chariot. He doesn't actually die, he's taken away. And Elisha, he dies right after prophesying Jehoash, the last king that he prophesies under. After prophesying Jehoash's death, Elijah dies. These are two prophets that tell the northern kings and give the northern kings ample opportunity to repent and to turn back to Yahweh and they never do. Eventually, a huge empire called the Assyrian Empire, and these guys coming down from the north. Now Assyria is essentially where Syria and Iraq, if you look at a modern day map, where Assyria, where Assyria and Iraq meet, uh, where a lot of the Kurdish people are located, they became a big empire, a huge military force, and they come down and they invade all of Israel, the north and the south. They defeat the north, and Hoshea is the last king of the north when Assyria invades. In the northern kingdom, everybody was either killed or exiled. And write this date down because it's one of the few dates that you need to remember when it comes to Bible study. 722 BC. This is when the northern kingdom is carried off into exile. Only the poorest of the poor are left. So all the people are either killed or exiled with the poorest of the poor left. What the Assyrians do, and this was common for um, 
empires back in that time is that they then filled the land with other nations that they conquered so that there were mix, ma mixing and matching people in order to subdue them. See, the thought was if you take people out of their element and put them in a different place, they're less likely to rebel as if you leave them at home in a familiar surrounding where they can be comfortable. This is why this region during Jesus's time, which is going to be called Sumeria, is such an off-putting place for the Judean Jews because it's filled with what they consider to be half-breed people, people who were uh, transported from other nations, pagan nations, bringing their pagan religions with them into the Northern Kingdom. Assyria invades. They aren't able to conquer Jerusalem, but eventually another nation, Babylon, Babylon takes over Assyria. Babylon is what we consider today Iraq. Uh, if you look at your map, Iraq. So Iraq and Syria, Babylon and the city of Babylon. Uh, Nineveh is actually the capital city of the Babylonian Empire. They invade. And eventually, Babylon is captures the southern kingdom. Now let's talk about the Southern Kingdom. The kings of the South, uh, there were a few very, very good kings. One of them, and I'm just gonna focus on a few kings here that, were, that are worthy of note. Jehoshaphat, he was a good king. He's mentioned both in Kings and Chronicles, but he, he was king during the time that Ahab was king in Israel. He spent a little bit too much time hanging out with Ahab. Even though he was a good king, he was kind of influenced by that. Um, Hezekiah in 2nd in Second Kings 19, he was a really good king. After many, many bad kings, he was a king when the Assyrians took the northern kingdom into exile. Hezekiah relied on God to save the nation of the southern kingdom, Judea, and the Assyrians were defeated because Hezekiah took counsel from the prophet Isaiah. Yes, that Isaiah. And when we get into the prophets, we'll talk about Isaiah in his book. I want to read for you a letter um, in 2 Kings 19. And let me get to that. And uh, this is going to be uh, verses 10 through 13. And this is when Assyria has surrounded Jerusalem. And a letter is sent to, to Hezekiah and to the people of Israel. And, it's, and this is what the letter says. Say this to King Hezekiah of Judah. Don't let your God, on whom you rely, deceive you by promising that Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. Look, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the countries. They completely destroyed them. Will you be rescued? Did the gods of those nations my predecessors destroyed rescue them? Nations such as Gozan, Haran, Rezpa, and the Edenites in Telassar. Where is the king of Hamath? the king of Arpad, the king of the city of Sepharavim, Hena or Iva. Really, they're taunting him. They're trying to bully uh, Hezekiah into surrendering, saying, your God is no better than their gods. But Hezekiah knows better. Hezekiah goes to Isaiah, and Isaiah says, have faith, God will deliver and they were delivered. Hezekiah's prayer, and we're gonna to go to verse 14 now. Hezekiah took the letter from the message's hands, read it, and then he went to the Lord's temple. He spread the letter out before the Lord. Then Hezekiah prayed before the Lord. 
Lord God of Israel, enthroned between the cherubim, you are God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You made the heavens and the earth. Listen closely, Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, Lord, and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib has sent to me that mocks the living God. Lord, it is true, is it true? I'm sorry, Lord, it is true that the kings of Assyria have devastated the nations and their lands. They have thrown their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but made by human hands, wood and stone, so they have destroyed them. Now, Lord, our God, now Yahweh, our God, please save us from this power so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you are the Lord and God, you alone. Wow. It's powerful, isn't it? God saved them from the Assyrians. Hezekiah's story doesn't end there. Hezekiah falls ill and he is close to death. But he asks God for more time. Now this falls into the category of be careful what you wish for. Because God does grant him 15 more years after healing him on the third day of his illness. Third day. That seems to be coming up every now and then, right? Hezekiah later shows an emissary from Babylon. Now remember, Babylon conquered Assyria. Babylon will eventually conquer Judea. But an emissary comes from Babylon before they conquer Judea. And Hezekiah shows him all his, he brags about his riches, all of his money, all of his gold, all of the buildings. And the emissary goes, mm -hmm. this place looks pretty good. I think we need to come conquer it. Very foolish thing he did. Hezekiah also fathers the next king to come, whose name is Manasseh. Manasseh is the worst king Judea has ever seen. He institutes child sacrifice in Judea. He's a horrible, horrible king. Now Manasseh's grandson, and we're going to go to King Josiah now, Josiah is faithful to God. So we're going through good kings and bad kings. Manasseh is the worst. And Manasseh is so bad that God says, you're going to be taken over by Babylon. This is a done deal. And this is through the prophet Isaiah, uh, prophet Jeremiah. All of this is being told to them, this is a done deal. However, Manasseh's grandson, Josiah, turns to God, and he turns the country back to God. And Josiah knows the curse that's coming. But God says, because you're turning, you're turning the nation back to me, you won't see this curse. The temple has been neglected for years under Manasseh and other kings. And Josiah has a, a restoration project of the temple. It's been used for pagan worship by Manasseh and Manasseh's son Amnon, Amon. And it was repaired. And during that repair time, they found the Torah. So I'm going to go to chapter 22. And I'm going to go to uh, verse 8. And I want you to hear the reaction to this. The high priest Hilkop, Hilkiah told the court secretary Saphan, I have found the book of the law. This is the Torah. Okay. I have found the book of the law in Yahweh's temple. And he gave the book to Saphan who read it. Then the court secretary Saphan went to the king and reported, your servants have emptied out the silver that was found in the temple and have given it to doing the work. Okay, a little business there. Those who oversee the Lord's temple. Then the court secretary Saphan told the king, the priest Hilkiah has given me a book. And Saphan read it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the book, this is the Torah, he tore his clothes agony, 
grief. He tore his clothes and then he commanded the priest Hilkiah and a bunch of other people, the court secretary Saphan and the king's servant Asiah, go and inquire of the Lord Yahweh for me, for the people and for all of Judea about the words of this book that has been found. For great is the Lord's wrath that is kindled against us because our ancestors have not obeyed the words of this book in order to do everything written about us. He was grieved that Israel had neglected the word of God. He made a renewed covenant with Yahweh. He tore down the pagan high places and the pagan altars, removed all the pagan altars. He reinstated the Passover. And because of this, because of this, God promised he would not send Israel into exile during Josiah's reign. But it came anyway. Josiah dies. Babylon attacks. They defeat Judah while Jehoiakim is king. Jehoiakim rebels against Babylon. He makes kind of a treaty with them, but then he rebels when he makes it, uh, uh, a pact with Egypt. Look, Here's the thing, kings, kings of Israel don't make pacts with Egypt. They're not trustworthy. They're not good people to deal with. Egypt is a wonderful country now, beautiful people there. Um, but back then, not so much. Jehoiakim's son Jehoiachin is now made king. And that is when the people of Ju Judah are exiled into Babylon. His uncle, Zedekiah, is then installed as king. So did Zedekiah learn the lesson of Jehoiakim? No, he rebelled against Babylon and Babylon retaliates harshly. Here's another date you need to remember, 586 BC. This is when the temple in Jerusalem is utterly destroyed by Babylon. Zedekiah is captured and his sons are killed before him. And then he's blinded. He spends the rest of his life in prison. Jeho Jehoiachin, now remember that was Jehoiakim's son, he kind of enjoys a good life in Babylon. He's called to the king's table. And that's where Kings and Chronicles ends. With, Jehoi with Jehoiachin under house arrest in Babylon, where he gains favor with the king of Babylon. Now, Chronicles talks about the return, but just briefly. And next week, we're going to talk about the return and what that entails. But until then, this is Chaplain Greg, your wandering Wesleyan. If you are enjoying this series, if you're enjoying this channel, please like and subscribe on YouTube. Leave a comment, share. And I'll see you next week. God bless.